Guys, I think I have a problem. I bought another one. And it already broke. Sometimes I don't pick the best candidate for a daily driver. If you're like me, maybe you just daily whatever piece of junk kind of fell into your lap. Or you get a somewhat nice daily and then slowly turn it into a card that's no longer a daily. My first car was a second gen Talon. It was non-turbo and then became a project of turboing and building it. And then I needed a new daily. So then my new daily was another second gen that I immediately made into an impractically low daily, which I replaced with a Mark IV GTI that very quickly became impractically low for a daily. And then I bought my B8, which you're familiar with, and uh, that was supposed to be a daily, but uh, I think we all know what uh, kind of happened there. And then I replaced that Mark IV with my more well-known Mazda 5 minivan, you know what I did with that, it made it impractically low. And also I had to fix that car on like a monthly basis. So it was impractical and it was a piece of shit. So after all that, I finally decided I needed something that was a little more normal, a little more reliable. So I replaced the Mazda 5 with my dad's 2005 Yukon XL, which I bought for $1. And then I put like 3,000 into it to make it roadworthy, but it was still cheap daily. And it lasted me for about a year uh, driving across the country until March of 2023. And I was driving on my way down to Destin, Florida for Slammed Enough Destin. And I basically got stranded in the middle of Southern Illinois with a wheel bearing explosion. So after fixing the wheel bearing in an AutoZone parking lot at seven in the morning and being half a day late to all the shoots that I had planned in Destin, Florida, I decided I need to get rid of that car. I need to replace it with something that's a little newer and a little more reliable. And you might be thinking, well, it's a wheel bearing failure, big whoop, on a car that's known for wheel bearing failures. So what? I agree with you. If it was an isolated incident, sure. But that Yukon has been in my family for about 16 years or so. And in that time, it has stranded me personally four times in the middle of nowhere. So between that, the amount of rust that was accumulating on it and all the other issues that were starting to pile up, it's time to make a change. Which leads me to this. This is my gigantic 2015 Audi Q7. And uh, it already broke, but I'll get to that. I've had this car on my radar for about the last three years. And obviously at this point, it, it's no secret that I'm a fan of Audi. You might even call me an Audi fanboy. And for a while now, I've wanted to get into a car that's powered by the famous 3OT engine. And I might talk a little smack about V8S4 owners sometimes, but they really know how to pick a platform because the, the 3OT engine is quite good sometimes. Another reason why I went for the Q7 is its size. For the last four years or so, I've been using my daily driver as my media vehicle. So that means mounting the camera on the outside of the car and all of the cargo space to take my gear from place to place all across the country. So the Q5 was a good option, but I just don't think it's big enough and I also needed this for the towing capacity. And if you're wondering why I need to tow things, I've got two other Audis. They break. So this one checked nearly every box for me. Nearly. We'll get to that. But first off, just look at it. I love how this generation of Q7 looks. 
And in my opinion, this is like one of the best looking SUVs. You might not share that opinion, but for me, the 4L generation Q7 with this package, the Prestige S-Line, whatever, with the fender flares, the 21 inch Audi peelers, I think it just, it looks menacing. It just, it looks really good. And of course I mentioned that I really like the 3OT engine. T standing for supercharged, because that makes sense. Uh, a lot of people really like the TDI platform and I had a few people recommend that to me as well. And I totally get it. You get TDI reliability, uh, better fuel mileage probably, and TDI torque. Uh, but I don't really know that much about diesels and I don't really have that much interest in it. Uh, and I just, I really wanted a 3OT vehicle, so that's where I am. And being a big Audi, it is unsurprisingly quite comfortable and uh, relatively quick. It is a little bit lethargic feeling and uh, very quiet. And those are things that I can address down the line with some light modifications. Light modifications, this cannot become another project. And I have to say, for being a big SUV, it really does handle quite well. Of course, the only other vehicle of similar size I have to compare it to is a 2005 Yukon XL, so of course, it's going to feel more agile. But it really does feel like a big car rather than feeling like a big SUV, which is quite nice. However, I did say earlier on that this didn't check all of the boxes for me. For starters, uh, it didn't come with a towing package. I didn't really look into that too much before buying it, but that's not a big deal. Uh, I think the day I bought it, I bought a hitch. It's already installed, no big deal. The biggest thing, and it was quite an oversight on my part, is the, this doesn't have air suspension. One of the things that drew me to this car years ago was that it comes with factory air suspension, and I love the idea of being able to air out a car without changing the suspension. Um, I also saw it as an opportunity to help promote my friend Tyler's business because he makes what's called a dump box and lowering links, which basically tie into the factory air system and allow you to slam the car, to air out the car as if it were on airlift or some other air suspension. So, sorry Tyler, uh, free promotion for TGK Motorsport. If you have a Q7 or other Audi on factory air suspension or a Tesla, he has products for you that will help you air out the car. But I was under the impression that all 2013 plus Q7s, especially the higher trim ones, came with factory air suspension, but uh, apparently I was wrong. I, I, the more I looked into it, I guess uh, the coil springs are actually the comfort suspension. So I don't know if maybe it's just a factory option that somebody selected for this car, the person before me, or I don't know. If you know more about these packages, feel free to let me know in the comments, but uh, yeah, it was uh, a bit of a goof on my end. And uh, I kind of had to make a game time decision when I got down to St. Louis where I bought this car, which is five hours away from where I live. And uh, I had to kind of decide, uh, am I really not gonna buy this car just because it doesn't have air suspension? No, it, everything else is what I wanted on it. So it would just be silly if I didn't. And it leaves opportunity for more modifications if I do want to mess with the suspension in the future. And uh, it also allows for fewer problems with factory airlines and stuff like that. So it's not the worst thing in the world, but it was uh, a bit of a goof on my part. But aside from those two minor things, I have to say I am still really stoked on this whole thing. I'm, I'm more excited about just being in a position to purchase a car like this. And I wouldn't be able to do it without you and all of the clients I've had for car shows and weddings over the last couple of years. Uh, I feel very privileged to be in a position like this. Obviously I didn't buy the car outright. I, the bank owns most of it still because at the end of the day, I am a poor and inbred A4 owner. But I still wouldn't have been able to do it without all of that. And I just wanted to say thank you um, for supporting me. But sadly, it already broke. One thing the 3OT is very well known for, unfortunately, is PCV failure. And 
this car is not immune. Even though it was one owner before me that was regularly maintained at the dealership, it still happened. One day, a couple of weeks ago, <clears throat> I was driving and all of a sudden the car just started whistling like crazy. I thought it was a belt failure until I took the oil cap off, whistling stopped. That means it's a PCV. So I had to dive into it because the next day I had a wedding three hours away. So out, of course, Audi's engineers being just so bright, they put the PCV in the V of the engine underneath the supercharger. So I really got to learn all about this car. It was a great day. So it's been a few weeks or I guess months now with the car. I've been able to take it on three different road trips. I used it as a camera car multiple times and overall it's great. It's comfortable, it's pretty quick, it handles well and it's quiet. That is something I feel like journalists don't touch on enough is just overall road noise. If you take a road trip in something like an old Yukon or a Mazda 5 or some other tin can of a car, wind noise, road noise, engine noise, it can get exhausting. But not with this. And using it in the mountains in Chattanooga, uh, we were able to keep up with our subject no problem. Much better than any other car that I've had as a camera car before. Which is great news. And honestly, it, this all comes to me as a relief. Buying a used Audi is always a gamble. And despite the stupid PCV failure that was kind of inevitable but still sucks, I still think it was money well spent. I should mention that this is the most I've ever spent on a car ever, at least up front. I've obviously put way more into my V8 since buying it. But I normally, buy cars that are well within my budget so then I have a lot more room for modifications after buying it. But because I don't plan on modifying this one really much at all, I was able to kind of look for something nicer than I normally would have, and I'm glad I did. Because I'm tired of shitty daily drivers. So that's it, my new to me and also recently fixed Audi Q7. And despite those minor problems that have happened, I'm really excited about it. I honestly have no idea what the reception from you guys is going to be on this because for one, it's an SUV, and two, the last time I introduced another car to this channel, it did not go over that well. But whatever, I'm happy with it. I've wanted one of these for at least three years, and I have talked my wife's ear off about it for way too long, so I'm just really happy I was able to make it happen. I have a couple videos already planned for it. It's not gonna be too crazy, but it's gonna be fun. And yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.